Hey there, yarn lovers. It's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Friday, April the 16th, 2021. And this is video number 106. It's my second recording of the day. I'm not too sure when I'm going to release this. This will be a catch up on all of the works that I've done over the course of two weeks. And uh, yeah, some of them are finished objects and some are works in progress. So I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy the next little while while I go through all of the goodies that I've got to showcase. Uh, so if you're just new to the channel as well and you're wondering what this is all about, hi, my name's Gary and I am the host of Urban Yarn. I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarny adventures. So that's knit crochet, a little bit of dabbling in hand dyeing of yarn and acquisitions. So I talk about price point and also where I buy things either online or in store and talk about uh, flagging some sales as well if I see anything so I can share amongst all of my fiber friends. For those fiber friends returning as well, I wanna say welcome back. Good to see everyone. I hope everyone's doing well and being safe. And uh, yeah, and thank you. I appreciate the time that you're spending here. If you're new as well, uh, welcome. So, Let's uh, get stuck into the podcast and talk about finished works. So I finished uh, the work that I had done. I'm showing you the, the test piece of the swatching, kind of uh, of the color fading that I was talking about over the last couple of episodes. So I, I did a swatch in a strip of maybe around, uh, what does it say, like four five inches in, in width. And then I just knitted up uh, with the holding strands of yarn together to blend colors. And this is what I turned it into, a little bit of a neck cravat style cowl. And it sits underneath a jacket like this. So really, really comfortable and soft. It's uh, fingering weight yarn, held double. And yeah, so I'll just show you what it looks like. So there's the tube. It was in a flat uh, swatch, as I mentioned, and I just seamed the edges together to, to create the cowl. So this was my test for a larger piece that I completed. Now, there's no pattern to this, it's just garter stitch, and uh, yeah, that was it. So yeah, and I finished it. I finished a, uh, this pattern has two sizes to it, and I chose to complete it at the smaller width of the of the project so it's it ended up being a scarf instead of a shawl wrap and it is called the adventuring scarf and it is by a designer called her name is amber o'brien it is a paid for pattern on ravelry i'm just making sure that i'm showing you the right side <laughs> yes i am and as mentioned it does go through the same color swatching that i did on the test. As you can tell, it is in a parallelogram. I think that's right. So the edges here, the, the shorter edges are on an angle and it has little eyelets throughout the pattern. Really, really nice texture. What it does, it actually enhances the direction of the, the line as well, having a little bit of the eyelet set up. Uh, and it's not a crazy in-depth detail stitch work, uh, which could get lost in this uh, beautiful color arrangement of speckles and stripes. But it really lends to a, an added texture to the garter stitch, which is the majority of the pattern. So. It ended up being, let's have a look at the length here. Uh, it is probably around, I'm going to say seven foot long. It hasn't been blocked yet, but uh, as I'm holding it, my arm spans, my, I'm a five, I, I stand at five foot eight. So my, my arm spans is probably around five foot eight as well. And I have this much hanging over on the edge. So around, probably around seven feet in in length and it ended up being what is that probably around I'm gonna say 12 to 13 inches in in the width of the um, the the scarf 
So I absolutely love the colors, how they ended up blending up. So I'll just wear it and we'll talk about the yarn. And the way that I like wearing it is kind of a wearing it around the front part first and having the the ends kind of draped down and you get the, the two points sort of uh, doing a little bit of a twist in front. So I really like how squishy this yarn and this fabric turned out. And there's the blend again. The really nice thing about uh, working up the test before going into the full pattern gave me a little insight into how the colors would play up but also the needle size. So on this one, I chose to do a three millimeter set of knitting needles. The fabric's lovely, but it did, it did uh, come up a little dense and a little less drapey. So I went up in the size of needle. So that was one thing that I learned from doing the swatch. And I decided that I didn't like some of the color combinations as it went through the the varying fade and I made sure that I reduced some of those combinations into the final piece and added in the more more of the combinations that I really enjoyed so what we had was it started off here in this kind of jade color and I really liked using that jade color how double with the mix of the next uh, color which was in the uh, transition of the four colors that I was using four colors that I was using so I, I started uh, the actual piece from here and I utilized more of the jade with this first speckling transition color together so I could make some alterations on the fly from this piece and this piece did take me a couple of nights to knit up and it was a great study piece for, for this one here. So the whole idea between uh, the color theme that I chose was spring moving into fall into the fade. So we start off with the young jade kind of spring colors speckled with yellows and young buds of different dandelions or whatever. And then it moves into more autumnal colors and then into finally the brown. So absolutely love it. It's so squishy. It feels so nice on. Uh, obviously not for uh, summer weather, but spring evenings or if you're going fall to winter, this would be a great garment to have. Uh, let's look at some of the yarn. I ran out of the jade color. It was a hand dyed yarn that I uh, over dyed from a Hobium yarn and it was called their uh, cashmere gold and Hobium no longer has that particular brand on their website but they do still have some of that range I'm not sure what weight they are I think they're a little thicker and this one ended up uh, was a sport weight so number two weight yarn I paired it with some of my own hand dyed yarn which is in this colorway here called I named it arena and it was in an event pack uh, for the Hunger Games that I created a while back. I'm going to say eight months ago. So I have a couple more hanks of these to use up, but I really loved it in this project. I paired it with uh, the next color here, which was a uh, story color, yarn, uh, sorry, color story yarns by Estelle. And that was my next one called Leaf. And the final one was a Hobium yarn in their yarn bee collection called Authentic Hand Dyed Tonal and the colorway was Chestnut em Ember? Ember, yeah. Chestnut Ember. So those three, plus the, the first one that I ran out of in a jade color were my transitional fade. Absolutely love them. So I have enough there to 
maybe try those colors in different fades later down the way or uh, if I want to do something else. Now the nice thing about the pattern that Amanda O'Brien had created called the Adventuring Scarf, the inspiration came from using up mini hanks and uh, each of the each of the repeats that run through, I think it's like a couple of rows, she's measured it out so that a, a, maybe a 20 gram skein of a mini would make one full section of the repeat. And then she's got a couple of samples on her pattern as well that have stripes throughout. And they look equally as beautiful in a fade or in a mini stripe kind of pack. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in utilizing some of your mini skeins, this might be a pattern to go to. I'll link the pattern down below in the description box as well. This pattern also taught me a new thing, a new technique, and it called for a stretchy bind off. And I didn't know what stretchy bind off was. So I went onto YouTube and did a search. The first person to come up with their tutorial was a very pink knits. And that's Stacy. She's a great instructor on how to do things. Uh, so in about two minutes, she shows you what the stretchy cord bind off is, uh, why it is essential. And then she jumps in to show how to do it. And in about two to five minutes, I pretty much got it. And I, it helped me bind off this final step in the pattern. Now, the next thing that I'm going to showcase is one of my Make 9 items that I've added to my 2021 Make 9 card. And here it is here. It's another knitted pattern and it's called the Brioche Beanie. It is, it is by Novita and I'm not sure who the designer is. I don't remember reading a designer name, but I will add that to the description box box if I can find it. I'll also link this pattern to uh, the where you can find it. It I believe it might be a free pattern. Not sure because I did buy a couple of uh, magazine uh, magazine patterns and it might be included in one of those magazines. But yeah, look at it. It is awesome. I love this pattern so much. It was a bittersweet frustration and tribulation kind of experience for me because I did learn a few things, a lot of things actually, because I've only done brioche twice before, one being in the round, one being actually three times before, two being in the round, one being a flat piece, and now this hat with decreases. So the nice thing about this pattern, let me show you, is that it is reversible. So this side has the green and blue yarn and hints at the ridging work in the yellow, which is equally just as nice. This is kind of a little louder, it's speckly. I like that. And then the other side is more of the yellow being the predominant color with the speckles of green and blue for the recess part. And I love it. It's so stretchy. It's very, very squishy and soft. And I can see myself doing a little bit more of this, but I do want to say if you are tackling for the first time and wanting to learn decreasing in brioche and you choose a small project like the hat, then I would say use lifelines because when I was feeling confident that I knew the stitch work for just the body part, which was the straight brioche, I was thinking, okay, I am confident with doing that part, but maybe not the decreases. So I, I put in a lifeline just before the uh, decreasing section began. I used it three times. So I tried one with breeding the pattern, pulled it back to the lifeline twice. <laughs> so there were a couple of uh, um, false starts and then I also put another lifeline in just before I switched to the, to the double pointed needles because I did this on a, what was it? It was a three millimeter circular set of needles and then when I transferred over to my three millimeter double pointed needles, I 
threw in a lifeline and it was quite needed as well because I pulled back to that lifeline I think once. I wasn't quite in the rhythm of using the double pointed needles and knowing exactly what I was doing with the sections. So I did make a couple of errors and I had a chance to pull back because that second lifeline was there as well. So just a little bit of a tip there on if you want to try out a brioche decrease beanie to add in a lifeline. It'll save it. Save the project, save your sanity. The two yarns that I used for that hat, this one here being 100% acrylic, I believe. I can't find where the where the breakdown is for this, but I believe it is 100% acrylic. And the colorway is number five. The brand is from Hobie, H-O-B-B-I-I, -B -B -I -I, and it is Ooh, World of Yarn in their J-PA collection. The colorway is number five. I've used this ball. I believe you get 100 grams. Yeah, 100 grams in this ball. I've made two hats. I've made that uh, Novita brioche beanie hat, and I also added in, had it in a bush trucker beanie as well. I held two together, and I just love the mall of blue and greens in there. And it's super, super soft, really, really soft. The second color was this gold yellow color from Cascades, and it's the 220 Superwash Effects, and it's 100% wool. So I'm combining two different yarns in the composition. So I've got yarn that's wool and yarn that is 100% acrylic. Now these are saying here, you can machine wash these because this is a super wash merino, but I think I would hand dye it just to be on the safe side. One other thing that I noticed with this particular yarn from Cascade, it was a faulty hank. It had three breaks in the yarn. Now they weren't clean cut breaks where you can see scissor, like a scissor would clean cut the fibers. These were frayed breaks that I had to mend it along the way. But I really, really love the yarn. The yarn is a lovely yarn. So that is my second finish completed item. Now I'm gonna talk about the make that I'm just starting, and it is a crocheted item. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is here. It's to a pattern that I got gifted to me by my two friends from Australia. Uh, so Justine and Simone, hi guys. Uh, they sent me a pattern from a designer called, I believe her name is uh, K. Alf Alfredson? Adolf Adolfson, sorry. K. Adolfson, and her pattern is called the uh, Cobblestone Cal. It is a paid for pattern written in the UK the UK terminology, and I'll link that down below as well. It's on Ravelry. And I've started it, so this is what it looks like. I did something wrong already on the get-go, but because it's a cowl, it's very, very forgiving. So it called for a four-ply uh, for a one for one yarn, and then it called for a bulky six for a, the second yarn. So I used a, I believe it was a, it's an eight-ply yarn. So I actually for my, for my um, black color here. So I'm kind of making it a slightly bigger cowl, as you can see, <laughs> it's, it's really big. But I don't mind it because uh, I can wrap it twice around uh, like a person who, uh, who ever gets this, can wrap it around twice and have like a little bit of um, a full coverage, so to speak. And I'm, I haven't finished, I'm still working on it. But I really like the colors. It looks like little galaxies to me, like swirling colors in the sky at night. So the uh, five, the five, the bulky, super bulky six is made up of one, two, three, four, five strands of four weight yarn. And one is a seriously roving yarn too. <laughs> so these are the strands that I'm holding together and it's making up those little cobblestones, so, that, so they say in the pattern. So that's the bulky, the super bulky six. 
So the colors that I've chosen are, I'll try and hold them all up together so that you can see. And these will probably be uh, cha changed out throughout the piece because I only have a small amount of some of them. And sorry about wobbling the camera. Here we go. And there's a little orange there too. <laughs> I really like the colors. So this one here is from, I believe, Willow Yarns, and it's their Quiver brand, and it's in this blue color. I don't really know what the colorway name is, the label's over there. I'm also throwing in some purple, which is a hand-dyed yarn that I over-dyed a Peyton's denim yarn. That's a lot of fun. This is the one that roves seriously like crazy and it's a universal yarn i think it's called bamboo bamboo something or other but look at that like there's every once in a while there is a puff of crazy yarn but i like the color and that texture is is pretty it's pretty neat and the final one that i'm uh, sorry i've got two more there's this one here which is from Ice yarns and it's called Wool Cord Aron in the fuchsia colorway and this is the leftovers of what I had started when I was making the child size bush trucker beanie hats. And here's another Peyton's denim yarn here. It's a chain spun yarn and it's in a orange color which I over dyed as well. So my mind is that I'm thinking of choosing and combining all of those sticky yarns that have roving or they have some sort of felted quality to them so that when I am joining them all together, they're actually matting up quite easily and uh, they're not separating. So as you can see here, they're all kind of like sticky yarns together and they don't really want to separate. They want to they want to slowly become one. Uh, so that's one way of me making sure that the yarn isn't going to pop out or I guess unravel in some way where it won't want to connect with the other yarns. So yeah, I'm kind of creating my own colors. Yeah, I really like it. So I just started that last night. So I have a little bit of work to do on that. I might ha actually have to make it a little wider than the pattern suggests because I am using um, a larger base yarn, which is should be a number two, but <laughs> I am using a number three. Um, but yeah, that uh, those are all of the finished items as well as the work in progress that I'm on right now. I don't think I have anything else to uh, show, but I do have some happy mail. So I'm just gonna stop the camera and I'll go grab that. Okay, I confess it's been a little time later and I'm back at the couch again, ready to show some happy mail. Super, super excited about this and what wonderful gifts I've received. So I wanna say at the start of this, thank you so much to both of these people who send me something and a side note here it's not necessary for you to send me anything but i do appreciate it and i do love and treasure all of the items that are in these gifts uh so i've reached out to the people who sent me the happy mail and they're happy for me to show the uh the cards and the gifts here on video and let's start with a lovely package that came with this card inside of it from my friend Jane. Wonderful, beautiful. It is a acrylic on canvas painting and this is one of her own. I just love, I mentioned to her in an email as well that the beautiful way that uh, she's blended colors together reminds me of pastel. It's just so superbly done. I love that so much. Thanks, Jane. And I won't read the inside of the card. I have read it, but I won't read it and share it with everyone. But uh, she was one of my test knitters. So for the Bush Tracker Beanie, thank you so much for that. 
Uh, also included were two, one ball of yarn here from Elise, and it is L Lana Gold Fine in a nice teal color. Really, really soft. And you get 100 grams in the ball. The uh, color is called... Mm, I don't see where it is. But it is 49% wool and I guess the rest of it is acrylic. 51 acrylic and 49 wool. The, I don't know whether this means it's the colour name here. Lana Gold. Anyway, it's in a teal colour and it's really, really soft. It's, a, uh, it's classified a four weight yarn. It's kind of a, a finer four weight yarn. But I really, really like it. And also she has included uh, with it a hand dyed yarn. And this has a mixed, uh, I was I was talking to her, Jane about this yarn and it is a mix of all different lovely uh, fibers. So alpaca and I believe there's some wool in there as well. But I see the idea behind it is perhaps maybe joining them together and making something pretty much like what I had purchased with my silk and alpaca blend from Penelope. Just uh, did a video on that on that yarn. And yeah, so maybe holding these two together or sharing the, the design using two of these yarns. So yeah, thank you so much, Jane. They're amazing. And not only were there a beautiful card and sentiments, but all and the yarn, but also a pair of knitting needles. I have not used Chagu stainless steel knitting needles before, so that that's a really nice gift. I love them so much. So it's a 2.75 millimeter set of knitting needles, and it's called the Red Lace Circular. So I guess that's uh, because of the the cord being in the red color, and I get to pack on loads of stitches because it is 40 inches or 100 centimeters in length from tip to tip of the needles and the cable. Thank you, thank you so much. And a few days after Jane's uh, package arrived, another package arrived from Hawaii and it was from my fiber friend Julie from Hawaii and she sent me this wonderful beautiful card I just you can see something in that photograph that really talks to uh, the love of animals so the back of the card it says uh, people for animals animals for people and it is part of the Hawaiian Humane Society I absolutely love the picture on top, uh, on this card, so thank you so much, Julie. Uh, I won't read, I've read the inscription and I won't read it here, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful message and I really like that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so in the package, Julie has gifted me three hanks of really, really soft, what is this? I think it might be sock weight or fingering weight. It's superwash merino, 75% and 25% nylon. And it is saying here that there are a over a hundred grams because it's got four ounces of yarn and approximately giving 434 yards I don't know what that is in meters so maybe a little less maybe 420 meters and the colorway is called Scottish Road Rose and it's inspired by the TV series Outlander I absolutely love them 
So it's got a bit of uh, like a pink rose color, but there's also some green in there as well. So nice complementary colors there. So let me just show you the, I've never heard of this brand before, so I'll just show you the front of the label. It's called Bumblebee, Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. Wonderful. And that's the, uh, that's the uh, website address should you want to go and check them out. I'll link all of the, the, uh, the yarns into the description box below and I absolutely love them. So they're super soft and they really are my colors. So I love, love, love them. Thank you. And also in the box, I thought it was all done, but Julie is also thrown in here some snacks for me and Chad. We could snack on those for sure this weekend. They look yummy. Honey roasted macadamias, and the brand is called um, Hanua Loa. I'm sorry, I'm probably brutalizing that. It's obviously Hawaiian. Ma Mauna Lona Loa. Mauna Loa. So yeah, can't wait to get into those. Yeah, me too. So we have a bit of an audience here, uh, the Peanut Gallery. Do you want to say hello, Mr. Chad? Hello. <laughs> All the happy mail that I'm so grateful for. It's amazing. I can't wait to get stuck into this yarn and to those uh, wonderful, delightful treats. I absolutely love them. Thank you, thank you. I think there's one of these missing. It's rolling off, on the off onto the floor somewhere but I love them. Thanks so much. With that, I'll catch you up in the next episode. Please everyone stay safe and enjoy your weekend or your day whenever you're watching this and I'll catch you up in the next show. Thanks. Bye.